real debate over economic policy can be. I want to respond to a speech that Senator McCain gave this The week. American people want to respond. And they're off. With the primary fights behind them and economic concerns front and center, both Obama and McCain are focusing a great deal on the economy. But their differences will be clear for all to see. On tax Two policy, things are clear. First, the two candidates have fundamentally different attitudes on some key economic issues. And second, while both candidates insist that this campaign is totally about the future, when it comes to economic policy, it's going to be a lot about the past. If you thought the 1990s were better for you than this decade was, Obama says, vote for me. If you thought this decade was better than the 1990s, McCain says, vote for me. And now Congress needs to take the next steps. Let's take a look at a few big picture items where there's a fundamental difference. First, taxes. Most of the tax cuts on income, capital gains, and dividends that were passed earlier this decade are supposed to expire in 2010 or 2011. So what do the candidates propose? McCain, who opposed much of the Bush tax cuts, now wants to extend them. And to kick it up a notch, he wants to cut the corporate tax rate from 35% to 25% and reform the alternative minimum tax. Obama seems content to let the income tax breaks expire for higher earners, as well as the reduced rates on capital gains, dividends, and estates. He calls for a middle-class tax cut. Healthcare is another hot economic topic where there is an area of fundamental difference. Obama wants to expand the population of the insured by letting everybody, including the self-employed and small businesses, buy into a new health plan similar to the Federal Employees Health Benefits Program, which covers federal employees in Congress. Individuals and families who don't qualify for Medicaid will get a subsidy, and employers above a certain size that don't provide health insurance, they'll have to contribute too. McCain wants to give individuals bigger tax credits and reform regulations to let people go out in the marketplace and buy health insurance on their own. The theory? Competition will bring prices down and extend the umbrella of insurance to a larger chunk of the population. Now, no campaign would be complete without gimmicky bad ideas. Economic policies that are obviously stupid, make little sense, and have little chance of succeeding. They get proposed for symbolic reasons, to send a message. For Obama, it's a windfall profit tax on oil companies, the people who are benefiting from high gas prices. How do you define what profit margin is unreasonable? 30%? 40%? Some companies manage to lose money with oil at $100 a barrel, and some manage to make money with oil at $10 a barrel, depending on how good their management is. In addition, oil is a global commodity. Prices are booming because of global demand. U.S. oil companies like ExxonMobil, massive as they are, they're only bit players in the market. What's McCain's big dumb idea? His proposal for a summer gas tax holiday. In theory, it would offer a temporary respite from $4 a gallon gasoline. But in reality, as virtually any economist will tell you, getting rid of the tax for a few months wouldn't necessarily translate into lower prices at the pump. So long as there is meaningful demand, somebody in the supply chain, the refiner, the distributor, the retailer, will eat up those savings. And even if it does cause prices to fall, it would just set the stage for an increase in September. I'm Daniel Gross with Newsweek.